Well, happy Saturday, Smite fans, and welcome into what is sure to be the biggest day of Smite so far here in 2020. We've got a great SEC matchup of the Poppies versus Belt Slap, and then the SPL is back later today, 3 o'clock. We got a couple matchups there for you to cast the uh, SEC, though, to start off the day. My name is Dolson, and Agro is here with me. How you doing, Agro? D Dave, it's the best day of the year so far, man. SPL kickoff day. I can't wait. And no you know, I feel a little bit bad, to be honest with you, because okay. normally an SCC game that's going to be this good would be getting a lot more hype from me. I'd be a lot more excited, but I, it's hard to focus when SPL is right around the corner. But I am very excited about this Challenger Circuit matchup we have today. Absolutely. And here in the SCC, this is what the matchups look like for week number four. We'd be broadcasting the Poppies versus Built Slap today. And the other two matches played offline. And then North America tomorrow, similar setup. Asking of the boys versus Trick Babushka will start off the broadcast. And then two more SPL sets to round out the day on Sunday. So let's look at these two teams, though. The Poppies and Belt Slap. I, I think it's not an overextension to say Belt Slap are the team to beat in this region. And the Poppies have an uphill battle ahead. Without a doubt. I mean, the Poppies have looked very good throughout this qualifier phase and now going into the, this is basically near the end of the phase in, in phase number one for the Smite Challenger circuit. So mm -hmm. the Poppies being in fourth is, is really not indicative of how good I think they have been so far in season seven. Now is not the time you want to try and make up <laughs> ground up against a team like Belt Slap, but that's the hand yep. you're dealt whenever you get off to kind of a cold start like the Poppies did. But I think they're better than their two and two record really shows. I agree. And why are belt slaps so good? I mean, you look at the roster, Julio, Johnny, Zero's Trick, t Trick Tank, Arkel. I mean, it's a star-studded roster, right? I mean, the, these are guys who have played towards the highest level, at the highest level. And I think it's going to take quite a bit of, of, I don't know, expertise, out-drafting, in-game mechanics to finally dethrone these guys from the top of the SEC. Belt Slap is undefeated, but they haven't looked immortal quite yet. I mean, they, sure. they look like the best team in the region by far, but... It hasn't always been squeaky clean, so to speak, for right. them. So uh, I, I'm looking for Belt Slap to continue to improve on, on their drafting and to make sure that their in-game execution is as high as we expect. But it, I, I don't think that they're unbeatable, necessarily, even nope. for a team like the Poppies. There have to be some cracks in the armors that the Poppies can take advantage of. Of course, the Poppies have a, a good roster of their own. Creed, Marcus, Cecchio, Draco Marino, and Warchi. So those are all names that you probably recognize. And can absolutely take it to a team like Belt Slap if those cracks tend to appear in that armor. Jumping into picks and bans, though. First few bans on the board. Kukul Khan, Persephone. So some mid lane priority right off the bat for the Poppies. Let's make Zeros as uncomfortable as possible, I guess. Yeah, when Zeros is used to this kind of stuff, man. I mean, he does not get to play the gods he wants to play the vast majority of his career. He's always been an impact player in that way and changing those picks and bans. But I love this hell ban. A lot of teams have been doing that up against the Poppies. Creed plays that in solo an awful lot. So you don't want to make sure that that's just something you don't have to deal with. Aphrodite is still open. And, and we've seen the Poppies go to other sustained compositions in the past when this hell is banned. So I wonder if that's the direction they're going to go. That's such an interesting, I think, conversation to have about, about the Aphrodite. I mean, I feel like it's been such a there have been rumblings about this god type of god. But we haven't seen it all that often here in the SEC yeah. and not yet at least in the Pro League, maybe later today, but it's all been rumblings. We haven't quite seen it swing out yet. Yeah, I, I can tell you from, from a, a ranked perspective, I, I'm seeing a lot of Aphrodite bands. It, it feels like the character... Sustain is just hard to play against. Sustain gives you very little wiggle room on your execution in-game because it only takes one or two fights for Sustain to break the game wide open. And so players don't like having that pressure exerted on them throughout the game. And, and so that's why I think that teams are always very wary of where sustain could potentially be in the meta. How good do we think it is? And can we be the ones to abuse it first? Sure. And I think throughout the first six picks here, Belt Slap have gotten themselves a great composition. I mean, talk about top of the tier list and Kamazots. They're going to swoop him up first. Ganesh as well, I, I think a Guardian that we've seen have an impact in a lot of these games. Maybe not the highest priority, but when, when a Ganesh kind of hits that swing, hits that momentum, and the game is just flowing right, big difference maker. 
For sure. I think that the, the best players in support role are picking a lot of Ganesh these days, and that's not a coincidence that a lot of really good support players are leaning towards the Elephant. I think that he just does enough in these team fights and his mobility around the map. He doesn't have to stay in the, the way very long. Right. Toss that one out. It's going to do a lot of the wave clear for you. You don't have to worry about last hitting with it accidentally because it was passive. You're always going to get your Thebes stacks. He's just an impactful pick. And I think that it's interesting to me that we're seeing so much talk about Kamazots being one of the best characters in the game and how good he is. But if he were really that good, would he be getting picked this much? Like, wouldn't he be getting banned more if he were sure. this nuts? I just feel like I'm seeing so much first pick Kamazots. And it feels like a coin flip if it's going to be as impactful as we expect. Some games it completely runs the entire the entire draft. Some games it does next to nothing. I think Kamazots is really, really good, but we've seen about two weeks of play now where he gets through pretty consistently for first pick, and it is not ending games every time, and I think that's something worth talking about. I agree. I, I think this is a big game, maybe a prove-it game for Kamazots. Belt Slap versus Poppies. Game one about to kick off. Can the Poppies dethrone Belt Slap from the top of the EU SCC? We won't have to wait and find out in game number one. And, and kind of immediately, I look at the Poppy's draft between a, a Kali and a Freya, though Freya is certainly not weak in the early game. Talk about late game scaling in that lineup. There's quite a bit for the Poppies. Their late game is pretty phenomenal, but they are really lacking in that early game because you've got Gibalanke in the mid lane. He brings better pressure than a lot of people would probably give him credit for, but it won't match that of Merlin on zeros. Draco is going to be able to set up some damage but it's really all auto attack based i mean this should be a pretty easy anti-auto attack itemization game for belt slap mid guardian males horrific emblem would have been really good i mean i think there's a lot that you can do at this point to try and set yourself up to not have to worry about these auto attackers so much which blade would be great as well now i gotta admit aggro i mean uh, i look at the the guardians that we've seen picked up and a wide variety of playstyles tends to stem from that, but I'm not used to seeing Ganesh go full invade mode. I, I, I feel like that's normally Kumbakarna, yeah, maybe a, a Sobek here and there, but Trix Tank feeling aggressive early on here in this Ganesh. It's really that Arkill probably just doesn't want to sit, share his farm with him because <laughs> Warchi's going to be getting solo farm, so it's to find somewhere to be, and if I'm going to be somewhere, I may as well force Draco to pick up speed, force him to hog it, force Marcus onto the other side of the map, and it makes sure that Johnny is going to be very safe in the jungle and not have to worry about too much extra pressure coming from Draco. Well, that leads to an early three-man in the mid, as to be expected. But I think an interesting conversation. You talk about that solo farm here in the long lane. Arkel and, and Warchi going to be vying for, for the majority of that. Freya, clearly uh, one of the prioritized magical ADCs, but... Kronos, man, I, I feel like he is few and far between when we see him. We don't see him very often, and it's it's no real surprise that Arkill is one of the ones to pull it out. He's always been very, very comfortable on this character, likes it a lot. But I don't know. I just don't know that the the itemization there in the Magical ADC role, I think the, the addition of Lifesteal to the Purple Boots is a huge get for Magical ADCs because it gets, they, they don't care too much about cooldown because they're doing right. a lot of their damage via auto attack, so they don't need it, abilities up as often as traditional mages, so that extra lifesteal helps them box better in lane. Watch out, Johnny. Yeah, you're going to try to gank mid lane, but you might only find death awaiting. He's able to sidestep off to the side, and a flicker from zeros will keep him alive as well, but Draco Marino finds the pluck. Checkio, one auto attack, maybe two is all you need, but the speed buff just enough to get Johnny out of range. The chase is still on, looking for the cutoff just around the side, but instead it's just gonna be the speed buff invade, and Johnny's gonna have to search elsewhere for some more XP. Should be able to stay on this blue buff though and sustain up off that pretty easily. Does have to be a little bit careful if Draco and Chekio wanna head on over, but there's the, the mid lane pressure that you normally don't think of for Gibalanke, but he swings even early on and it forces Johnny back a little bit inaccurate with the Vampire Bats contributes to that for Johnny for sure. But it isn't all bad. And even though Johnny loses his speed buff, Zeros ends up getting the beads out from Chekio. That Eclipse was going to come in and, and, and force Chekio back. So he used beads preemptively. So that's at least a slight win. 
for Belt Slap. I think they can punish that. That's a good banish onto Arkel, and actually Warchi's gonna pop wow. the ultimate and hits the shot. See you later, Arkel. Kronos rewinds back to base. First blood, three and a half minutes in. And Warchi just gets a little bit extra XP. I think it might have been was it Marcus coming over and helping him on the on his Alpha Harpy in the jungle? Someone someone came over and helped out a little bit. And whatever extra farm Warchi got, he just put to good use. That was perfect play by him. Abuses the fact that Arco's only level four, uses that power spike of grabbing his ultimate a little bit earlier, and is able to is able to push for that first blood bounty. Now he's gonna be ahead of Arco. You can see he already has the purple boots done, whereas Arco only sitting on boots two. And this is a matchup where Kronos can fall behind pretty quickly. You saw Warchi use that Valkyrie's discretion to get out of the stun. Doesn't have to worry about that damage at all. I, it feels like this matchup's pretty volatile. Whichever magical ADC gets ahead gets to force defensive tools from the other one pretty consistently. And Warchi's off to a great start. And that's always the threat, I think, that this uh, this Freya brings to the table. And not only in the late game, but some early game presence as well. And I, I think that's a, a double a double bad scenario for Belt Slap, where, you know, I, I think if you can maybe withstand and extend the time it takes for this Freya to get online, you've given yourself a, a good chance. But not only an early kill, but but for first blood, Warchi already snagging a level lead and some of that extra gold. Arkel's going to have an even tougher time, I think, of, of staying relevant here in this lane. I think so. I mean, he's going to have to try and play fairly safe because Freya just pushes leads really, really well because she can step up on you with that banish. She doesn't have to close the gap very much at all. You can stay at full auto attack range, still get whooped, and then she's just going to be able to close that gap, start barrel stuffing you with slowing autos that deal a ton of damage. And it's very hard for you to get away at that point. Wouldn't be too surprised to see Warchi slow it down just a little bit, wait until he hits his his next ring or, or maybe even ring right. two but right now the the power difference between warchi and arkill isn't as big as warchi can probably make it which is a trip back to base right a uh, a specific scenario maybe leading to first blood there for warchi but still a one level lead nonetheless here in the long lane and i, th I think there's an interesting conversation to have around the the short lane as well uh two again two gods that are, are sort of in and out you, you have an rdo Creed piloting that one, then a Guan Yu there for Julio. What, what does that matchup look like for you? It looks like he's getting ganked on the right-hand side, and Creed is going to get cut down easily with some help from Trix Tank. That lane is going to be a lot of that. Only ganks are going to matter. Oh, Johnny is going to get stunned down. Ultimate out from Czechia, who's rotated through from the mid lane, but it's not result in much except a couple half health members of belt slap so one kill traded out a good gank into the solo lane for belt slap is going to put a kill on the board now for the guan yu and i think well timed creed had, had himself at least a half level lead over julio and now things a little bit more even maybe tilted in favor of that guan yu uh, you just love ganesh in compositions where someone's going to get stunned in place for a little bit with some good warning because that dharm something stunning someone on dharmic pillars is a death sentence Trix Tank has plenty of damage. He's going to look to spread a little bit more onto Draco Marino, who takes to the ground. But Johnny's found the leap, and Arkel has found the damage. No more one-kill discrepancy there in the long lane, as Arkel has found himself an early kill. And Trix has just been all over the map, hasn't he? He goes a solo lane, gets a kill over there, heads back over the duo lane, sprints everybody in, catches up to Draco, and puts him down with a little bit of help. That's two kills that Trix Tank has facilitated quickly, and he's gotten himself a little bit of a lead at the same time, which is great. Ganesh is a god that can more or less solo a backliner yeah. given the opportunity. You, If you lock him on the bug zapper, you're going to do 60 plus percent of their HP. And getting a, a Ganesh who's ahead is very, very difficult to handle. Now, Trix isn't going for that style. He's actually gone for the tank boots, so he wants to make sure that he's staying up as long as possible in this game. So I don't think he's going to be really necessarily soloing anybody anytime soon, but it's, it's something that you still have to watch out for, his damage output when I have. Yep. It looks like Thebes maybe first completed item overall there for Trix Tank, mirrored by Draco Marino on the Sobex. Zero's under a slight bit of duress, just forced off those harpies. Uh, but now that Guan Yu has a, has a kill under his belt, what's his role in a lot of these fights? I mean, obviously... 
big presence in these big team engagements that we'll see. We'll be back to that in just a second. Draco Marino stunned down. Darmic Pillars drop, and here is Julio. That's the role he wants to play. Round the backside, get the kill on a Draco Marino. Checchio beneath his tier one tower. But I'm not sure he'll be able to find safety. Julio, the rotation, that's good for a double. Three kills on the board for this Guan Yu, but the action's not over just yet. Marcus puts the DOT on Johnny, and he finds death as well. So Marcus on this Kali now has found a kill, but he is slightly in range of zeros, who shuts him down for kill number five for Belt Slap. And he lost the beads as well. That's not a great spot for Marcus now because he's going to be fairly vulnerable for a pretty good period of time. I mean, that's that's what you're looking for from Julio. You give him a lead over there on the right-hand side, you gank his lane early, it frees him up to get a lead, start rotating faster than what Creed is going to be able to do on Ardeo, a guardian. You expect Guan Yu to outclear there anyways, but Guan is just a character that can feel so impactful at times. I think we're not really seeing enough Guan Yu play. Julio is just doing it perfectly. You want to go onto the back line, immediately stun out a carry, set up for Johnny, set up for Trix Tank, whomever, and then turn and heal. Turn and heal your teammates, because it's going to help you get your ultimate back up faster with that passive. You're going to end up doing a lot in these team fights to help shred frontliners that are diving your carries. Guan is just a character that, that juggles a whole lot of different tasks in team fights, and I think he's fairly difficult to play. For that reason, you kind of have to go frontline, backline, frontline in a way in these team fights, but Julio's a very experienced solo laner, and I've loved the way he's played it so far. And he's opted for Genji's guard first completed item overall there on that Guan Yu. Do you like that pickup? Quite a bit, because he's so dependent on cooldowns, and his cooldowns are fairly low, but you want to make them even lower. You want to feel like you always have something to do in these team fights, and Genji's is exactly that. It gives you MP5, which sometimes Guan Yu can struggle with. It gives you 10% CDR, and then it gives you that burst of cooldowns back whenever you get hit by magical abilities. And he's going to be getting hit by something from Creed, Draco, or Warchi at some point during these team fights. And getting that flat reduction off his cooldowns is so impactful for Guan Yu. I, I love Genji's on, on a couple different gods, and Guan is one of them. Arco has been banished, and down he falls, but... Now has rewound himself back to full health. Warchi back down to earth as Johnny will swoop through like a bat out of hell. And the Darmic Pillars there just to buy some zone. Draco Marino stuck inside that fight and ran. Arkel snags himself a kill as well. Great rotations from Belt Slap result in two more. This is what we're talking about when it comes to lane priority and pressure that you have on the map. And, and how the Poppy's lacking it is really hurting them. We've seen Julio beat Creed on rotations because he just has better lane priority in the solo lane. Right there, Zero is able to get to that fight on the left-hand side long before Chekio can because he just has better lane priority. It's it's relevant here. And this is a Gold Fury started up by Belt Slap down to about half health. All five members of the Poppies are left back alive, but Belt Slap realizing that uh, they're a little bit closer than maybe previously thought are going to back off of that Gold Fury. Do, do you like that call to kind of change course and back off from the Fury? Yeah, I mean, they, they had a good opportunity there, Dave, but it's just a little bit risky. You're, you're doing so well in these scattered engagements across the map because of the pressure you have. Why buy Poppies back in by 50-50 in a Gold Fury? They just don't have good sure. secure. I mean, Arkill's got decent secure on Kronos. You can 3-1 and have them land at about the same time, and That'll do a good amount of damage. That'll out DPS anything singularly that the Poppy have. But that's not, you're not looking for 450 bursts. You know, you're looking for 1100, somewhere in that range, 7, 800, to try and guarantee that it goes your way. It's just not worth the risk at that point without ultimates. Now that Trix has his ult, you can use that to zone or, or burn the Dharmic Pillars to or just burn the Gold Fury. Getting your ults back up, I think, is, is more relevant even than than making sure that Warchi is dead at the time. Well, I am curious, though. I mean, you talk about big, you know, thousand-plus damage bursts, and I sort of look around both lineups, and I would argue they're, they're somewhat similar. Maybe good objective burn on both sides, but nothing jumps out at me is that one big sweeping ability that's going to secure that, uh, that Fury or Pyromancer or Fire Giant for you. Exactly right. Both teams have great objective DPS. I mean, Freya is very, very good at objective DPS when she gets her items online. Chekio, depending on if he goes crit or not, will, will really, really take down Fire Giants. 
in Gold Furies very quickly with crit. A little bit less so with Pen, but but still very high, even among Hunters because of his power that he gets. And Merlin is the objective DPS king. I mean, he, he just scorches objectives with his fire 2-1. Right. But you're right, no, no real secure, so it's going to be up to fighting beforehand to, to buy enough space to make sure that the objectives will go their way. And that looks like maybe what we have on hand here. Four members of Belt Slap immediately ready. Good pull in there by Zeros. Darmic Pillar is going to chunk some damage out onto Warji, who takes to the skies as well. Two low health members in the back line, and Arkel shuts them down. That's another one on the board for this Kronos. Creed stunned down. Could be an extra as Arkel has a double. Marcus has fallen to Johnny in the meantime. Suddenly, two members of the Poppy is last left alive. This could be the Fury fight that Belt Slap wanted. Man, I mean, you think back just a couple minutes ago where Arco gets soloed for first blood. You're thinking Warchi's going to be popping off this game. And ever since Belt Slap has gone, don't worry, Kenny. We, we got your back here. We're going to come over. We're going to make sure that you're nice and safe and sound. Starts out 0-1, is since 4-0-1. And you, th you see the weakness of Freya when she just gets dogpiled, when everyone's going for her. She doesn't have a whole lot of options to escape. Has to use Valkyrie's discretion to not get zapped by right. Trix Tank's Darmic Pillars. As soon as that's down, gas pedal straight into the back line. And no one's peeling well enough for the Freya with this composition. It's, it's just very difficult to do with Belt Slash's phenomenal back line dive. You can't peel Bat Out of Hell. You can't peel Cavalry Charge. There's nothing you could really do to save Warchi's life, and, and Arkill is just free casting in these team fights, which is also not a great sign for the Poppies. And I think if you're the Poppies, you're you're hoping that that's not a backbreaking fight there. About 13 minutes into this one, the gold lead swoops up in favor of Belt Slap, pushing for 5,000 now at this point. About 15 minutes in, levels wise, pretty much discrepant for everyone on the Poppies here at this point. What are you even comfortable doing if you're the poppies here? I mean, I don't know if you're trying to contest Fire Giant or you're just maybe letting some of these towers go down and trying to find the right fight instead of trying to force anything new. You're really just hoping that, that Belt Slap is going to give you an opportunity to, to let one of your backline carries free cast in farm in a team fight because that, that is huge to have either the Gibalanke or the Freya pick up a, a double or a triple kill in a late game team fight, that'll catch them up pretty quickly. But that's another problem with the Poppy's composition is they don't have a, a great secondary game plan. They, they don't really team fight that well when the primary game plan of let's just stay even and hit late game and, and right. kind of get there. There's no one that they can go, hey, we need you to, to itemize for right now a little bit more. We need you to, to step up and do this a little bit better. Their composition is really just sitting around with their hands in their pockets until it's time, until the, their comp is really going to start working. Well, hey, maybe the time is now, but Johnny will hope to have something to say about that. Bat out of hell is always a get out of jail free card, or most of the time at least, and use this time. So I guess if there's a small silver lining, the Poppies were able to snag that Kamazot's ultimate, but I'm not sure they're going to be able to hold on to that one. Arkel's going to pop his ultimate as well. Johnny's still here, ready to fight. Valkyrie's discretion for Warchi is going to plug down some damage, but that's not a 1v1 you're looking to take if you're this Freya. Arkel, with four kills in his back pocket, will likely win that one. But I think smart game sense there from Belt Slap. They're going to back off instead of trying to further press the issue. Fight still could be on. Darmic Pillars is going to plug away just a little damage now at the Poppies and Marcus is going to leap out. Not before Warchi is stunned down though. Big three-man silence. Marcus chopping away. Has that hasten Katana so he's going to stick right onto Arkel. Does he have enough oh, damage? No. no, he doesn't. Arkel turns around the moment that ultimate times out. Perhaps his fifth kill of the game. Now Draco Marino is looking like he could be next on the menu. That's the pluck onto Johnny, so Warchi has found the kill. Trickstank goes down. Suddenly a double kill for the Freya. And what a turn of the tables there. The Poppies maybe come out ahead. That's huge. And just kind of like what I was saying, you just hope that one of your backline carries gets to get a double or a triple kill in a team fight and even them up pretty quickly. Warchi gets a shutdown kill onto Johnny, kills Trix Tank. I believe that's Trix's first death of the game. And all of a sudden, Warchi's relevant again in these team fights. And that could have been even better for the Poppies had Belt Slap and Arkill not lived with a sliver of HP. I don't know mm -hmm. that he was Marcus's target, but it, especially if he was, that would have been a full heal coming for Marcus off that reset. 
that would have been massive for the poppies. As it stands, still good. They're still happy with that outcome, but it could have been even better, and it was yep. razor thin margins. Yeah, it's the difference between a 2-2 Kali and a 1-3 Kali, and you're you're playing with fire if you're letting a Freya farm up some kills and the Kali. I mean, that's the, that's right. the end game scenario there for the poppies, and so I think it, as well, if you're belt slap, you're unhappy with how that went, but at least somewhat happy that it didn't completely spiral out of control. It is still a almost spot on 6k gold lead here for Belt Slap and the Fury will be up and respawning in the next 30 or so seconds. But it is starting to get to that point aggro where if Warchi is left unchecked in some of these fights, he can make a big difference. He really needs to finish this demonic grip. That's going to be a, a huge turning point. And I don't know if he's going to have enough gold before this Fury fight's about to break out. I mean, even if he started backing right now, he'd be here too late to be relevant if Belt Slap knew that he was backing and pulled it right away. But Demonic is going to change the game for him. It gives him a lot more penetration, a lot more attack speed. Well, there's no teleport for Creed, something to take note of. And Julio has rotated over from that solo lane. So immediate numbers advantage. Creed will begin his rotation back through. Checkio has wow, to burn the ultimate, him. but he got deleted. Johnny in there to save her, or help out rather his solo laner and Marcus back beneath his tier 2 tower, so the immediate presence of a solo laner making a big difference. Love it. Julio didn't really need the help there. Johnny came in to kill secure, of course, is the term we're going to use around here, but J Julio had that one on lock, just as Zeros has Draco on lock. I don't know, Iko. This one seems to be spiraling a bit out of control. A small moment of brightness, maybe, for the Poppies with a double kill for Warchi in the long lane, but that's all come crumbling down as Belt Slap add two more kills, pick up their second Fury of the game, and extend the gold lead further here, about 8,000 now, 20 minutes into the game. And this should be a good Fire Giant attempt by Belt Slap. I mean, they have a, a 5v3, now a 5v4, but Chekio's ultimate is still down. He's got a long way to walk. We already talked about how good the burn is for Belt Slap. 50% on the Fire Giant, but Belt Slap instead are going to turn their attention towards Creed, and Johnny knocks him down. Darmic Pillars by some good zone, ticks down some damage. Marcus forced to use the beads. Julio's on the chase, and Chekio back from respawn is going to try to find some damage, but the second kill in this fight for Johnny goes on to Warchi, and I think that's another opening for Belt Slap to turn around and start up the fire. No ultimates, really. I mean, it's only Arkill that has his. Draco's here, and might try and just make the hero play, but look at the DPS. Belt Slap already has it. And that's that's brilliant. I, uh, the DPS, the CC, the lockdown on Draco Marino, it's a sliver of a chance, but if you and I are casting together, we've learned that no, uh, no yeah. objective is safe until it is immediately cleaned up by the team that has started it. So smart plays there by Belt Slap to burn, lockdown, and secure. And you might even find an extra kill here on the Chekio, who's a bit overextended by the red buff. He's dead. I mean, Julio is just playing such a good game on this Guan Yu. And, and this is the type of thing that I love about MOBAs is that you start to see these little micro adjustments over and over and over again throughout the year. Jibalake has been so popular as of late. and He's looked really, really strong. So let's go into the bag of tricks. What in, in the past when Jibalake is strong, what have we picked? It's Guan Yu's one of them. Jibalanke cannot sure. do really anything against that character. His dash is long as Jibalanke's, but Cavalry Charge covers all that. And once you get covered by Cavalry Charge, you really can't get away from the Guan Yu at all. Guan can stand in front of you. He can really out-trade you unless the Jibalanke is super fed. I, I love this, this counter pick by Belt Slap, and it's worked to perfection. I've loved the rotations from Julio as well, realizing where his strengths are and rejoining these fights. And a fight could be brewing here as Julio pops up onto the horse and is going to find Warchi in the back line. Arkel's found some damage, but not enough to get rid of Warchi just yet. No Valkyrie's discretion burned just a moment ago, so Belt Slap could find an opening to get into the back line. Johnny is effectively solo Chekio for the second time in the last five minutes underneath the mid tier two tower. Now he's waiting in the wings, maybe for a potential rotation through, but instead it's just going to be waiting for those mid lane minions to crash. The left side Phoenix has fallen in the meantime, and there's still 30 seconds left of a disadvantage for the Poppies. Julio still so tanky. He's going to get that ultimate back fairly soon, even though it's down right now. He shreds Draco and opens up the Phoenix Siege for Belt Slap. 
That's a good double stun from Marcus, but I'm not sure exactly what the poppies need to get them back into this game. He'll fall and it's the F6s that do the ending at the end of the day. 23 minutes in, Delt Slap convincingly take this one. Poppies had the early game, but Delt Slap had the answers. I mean, they, they had the first blood, and I think that was about right. it as far as the early game went for the Poppies. You just cannot give that much map priority to Belt Slap. They're, they're just not going to let you have an opportunity in these games. And I think that that's a lesson that Belt Slap has learned. In the past, we've seen them go with compositions that are much like what the Poppies have and still win, but struggle doing so. It takes them 40 minutes or so to close it out. And I think that they've realized why why? You know, what, what are we doing that for <laughs> when we could just pick some lane pressure? They have great late game, too. Don't get me wrong. Guan Yu grouping right. up is very strong. Arkill and the Kronos is one of the best late game uh, hyper carries you can have. Merlin's very strong in the late game. But this composition also has way better map pressure than that of the Poppies. You just can't give a team that is going to be better than you the opportunity to beat you in the early game without an op without any sort yep. of response. And I think that we've learned that throughout years and years of SPL, SML, all that level. Agreed. It's not disrespect to the poppies to say the belt slap is better. This is the belt belt slap's an SPL level team. You just right. can't give them the ball and go, okay, you get this for twenty minutes and then we are gonna boy howdy are we gonna give it to you after that. And you're not gonna get a chance to play, dude. The game's gonna right. be over at that point. You have to pick better map pressure. Even with that first blood, it never felt like Belt Slap was really out of control. I mean, it, it really seemed like they had the answers for everything that the Poppies were throwing at Belt Slap. I, I do think we'd be remiss if we don't mention Trix Tank, of course, Julio on some, some big yep. rotations. Such an impact in this game and in these fights. But Trix Tank, highest kill participation in the game, 16 assists and only missed out on a couple of kills really down the line. The Ganesh pick looked good and it worked. He was great. He, Trix Tank has looked very strong so far this year in the Smite Challenger circuit. And that's what you expect from a guy who's been a premier support player at yep. the highest level for his whole career through first six seasons of the SPL. Now taking a step back, going to the Challenger circuit. He's, he's going to be fine all year. No doubt about that. Sorry, you see the smirk because a graceful jump to the bed by uh, That's right. By Mac. right. There, there she <laughs> is. She's in, her, she's in her position. That's where she loves to be. I'll try and refocus the camera on her during the break. because She's ready for some SPL, really right? Matters. Yeah, she's, she's set up early. You know, We're, I'll give her a little bone up there. She'll be, she'll be chilling all day long. She can't wait to watch the games either. She's got a, a front row seat for all the action. We still got the rest of this set to get through, though, before we get to the SPL. Belt slap, they take an early 1-0 lead in this one convincingly in game number one. We still got at least one more game right after this. And just like that, we're right back in the EU SCC. And if you've been playing Smite all this weekend, I'm sure you've seen the Grim Omens event. So make sure to jump in and check out Totem Caller Hu Yi, the newest tier 5 skin. It's sick, one of the, the coolest ultimates I think I've seen in this game. He's part of that Grim Omens event. If you select buy now, you'll get him a bunch of other skins on top of it. So make sure to take a look at Totem Caller Hu Yi available in game now. Agro is still with me. I'll talk about the poppies up against Belt Slap. Uh, a noticeable camera change there. And I think we're Yes. This is as much as my camera will zoom. So I apologize. I was hoping it would do a little bit more. It also won't focus anymore on Mackenzie, though I tried. Uh, I am working on getting a secondary webcam set up because this is a window that she's looking out right now. Right. I'm going to put it on the window sill so that hopefully we can get a very good Mackenzie cam. But that's for the future, you know, coming soon, TM. Yeah, the, the camera might not focus on her, but all of us here at home are, are focused on her. So she's got at least the internet focus, which I think yes. count, counts for something. But we can focus back on game number two here between Belt Slap and the Poppies. Uh, is that really a a draft issue in, in picks and bans, in, in your opinion, for the Poppies in game one, or is that pure just execution down the line from Belt Slap? It's always both. There, there's, I, I think I can count on one hand the number of games I thought were unwinnable because of a composition. You, sure. you do need to be able to execute in game, but I do think that, that was heavily based on how late game that composition was from the Poppies. Warchi got off to a pretty good start, and, and it's okay to have late game built in. You know, It's okay to have Freya and Kali on the same team, you just can't have Ardio and Givalanke as your other laners. That's just going to be too difficult to really pull off. I think that you need to have at least one lane where you're going to have some sort of pressure 
over what Belt Slap have. And look at the uh, the respect the poppies are giving over to uh, to Trix Tank here. They're, they're going to ban out the Sobek, the Ganesh as well. I think that's pretty warranted, to be honest, Agro. I mean, normally we're, we're used to seeing a different slew of high-priority bans here, but if a support is going to have that much of an impact on a game, I don't dislike the idea of, of trying to put them on something that will lessen that impact. No, I, I think it's the right idea for sure. I mean, Zeros was the one that they were banning out last game, but the problem is there's a lot of impactful Guardians right now. I mean, sure. they banned Sobek Ganesh, Trixank picks Kumba Karna, but Shing Chen was still up. You're, you're not picking it. Kepri is still up. I mean, there, there are lots of really good Guardians available to you. Uh, I don't feel like Trix is going to end up really behind the eight ball just because you, you ban away Sobek Ganesh. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the, the mindset may be okay from the poppies, but the, the god pool wide and deep there for Trix Tank to be able to make use of. Thor locked in here, presumably in the jungle for the poppies, and I think that's a good pick here. You look at Kamazot, who was in the jungle for Belt Slap in game number one, might be returning to the jungle here in game number two. But, but Thor is a god that can have a more immediate impact in some of these games than someone like the Kali. Agreed, and this is already better. I mean, Kepri is going to try and help this situation and try and get a little bit more ahead, and that Sobek could pr provide some more defense and still good kill pressure from the Kepri. Can peel that Kamazots fairly well if he doesn't go Purification Beads early on. I love the bans by the Poppies, two Warriors that Julio plays a lot in Guan Yu and Kukulin. His signature tier is still open, so wouldn't be too surprised to see him go that direction. But Belt Slap is clearly just going, okay, they're going more early game. We'll just go even more more early game than what they have so far. That Uller pickup for Arkill has been a nightmare for just about everybody to try and deal with in that long lane. Yeah, it's been tough. Arkell, a, a massive role to play in the win for Build Slap in game one. And Uller is going to be tough for the Poppies to deal with here in game number two. Mm -hmm. Interesting down the line, though, for the Poppies. Cerberus and a Cupid locked in. I couldn't tell you the last time I've seen Cupid play. I don't, I don't know if we've seen them all really this year so far, but I love it. And it's there to be like, yo, Julio, don't play the signature tier, dude. We've got Cupid considered one of the better counter matchups. And you already know Julio's insta lock and tier anyways in anyway, that slot. Right I mean, the, the cripple is good here. It affects every single player on belt slap. Cupid's biggest problem is that even when the ultimate looks really good, the enemy support buys Heavenly Wings and they use it whenever you ult and it doesn't do anything. That That's the biggest problem. I'd expect this Cupid to, to do some good things here, but I don't know, man. Cupid always looks good, I feel like. It, it just sure. never really comes to pass. Oh, well, it's another god that has another prove-it opportunity here in game number two. After disappointing game one, the Poppies will look to bounce back up against Belt Slap and no heavenly wings, heavenly wings just yet for Trix Tank. Actually, early aggression here by the Gold Fury. Arkle has taken some early plug damage, but turns around some poke onto Warchi. But Johnny, talk about early game on that Kamazots is on the chase. Morgi is going to be able to escape just a little bit, but just needs one more attack. Johnny has already used uh, that ability, so it's back on cooldown now, and he's going to turn around for a little bit more. This is getting messy early on, Agro. A little bit, but at the end of the day, Warchi's still alive, which did not look guaranteed for a little bit there. I mean, Arkill uses some potions, but he's still up and standing. Wonder if there's going to be a purple buff invade. It won't be belt slap decide to let the poppies get their own purple with Marcus standing over here on this left hand side. It was a shell used though by Draco Marino to uh, to help Warchi stay alive. So maybe the small win there, Johnny trading out the blink uh, to try to re-engage. Trix Tank right back up to his old tricks though, trying to be uh, obnoxious as he can here in this early game, and I think that's maybe a, a great boon to your point. You're going to ban out the Ganesh and the Sobek, but Kumba Karna is still one of the best Guardians at being annoying in the early game. No doubt. Maybe the best at being annoying in the early game. It's just very, very hard to kill this character, basically at any point, but especially early on when he's just so tanky and has so many forms of CC and mobility. I do want to point out, by the way, that when you are going to pick the Cupid, I love it in conjunction with Kepri because so much of Cupid's damage is dependent on uh, a yes or no question. 
Did I hit Heart Bomb? If yes, okay, you did some good damage. If no, what are you doing here? It's time right. to get away from this. Kepri guarantees that that one is going to be on the target you want it to be on. You can abduct the, the tank, immediately Fields of Love, Heart Bomb them, and, and, and have some pretty good success. Johnny is going to try for round two in the long lane. Gank has plugged some damage. Warchie will dash away, but Johnny's got a dash of his own. Lands onto the Cupid. Draco Marino body blocked out. See you later, says Oracle. Two kills, two minutes in. Belt slap off to a roaring start. And that's what you really want to see around Arkel in particular on the Uller is getting him this early lead, setting this Cupid behind. And it's really credit to Arkel that that double kill goes through in that lane because he gets Warchi low enough to where Johnny doesn't have to expend too many resources to get that kill. Doesn't have to worry about blinking in or getting all his burst damage off instantly because Warchi's going to get too far away. It's really just that... It's only going to take one or two abilities to kill Warchi because Arkill did so much work. And then we could take all day, you know, chopping yep. down the tree that is Draco. He's not going anywhere as a level two bug. And I think an important note to look at is the shell. I, I looked just quickly after that double kill. The shell was about three seconds off of being ready to go again for Draco Marino. So now you look back mm. at that early game skirmish, and while it didn't result in any kills for Belt Slap, burned the shell and now could have resulted in, instead of maybe just one kill in the early game now they've found themselves a couple and I don't, that's that's the opposite of what you want you're going to try something new with this cupid and the kepri as well and suddenly arkel on one of his best gods has already carved himself out of lead and this is the way i feel like so many cupid games go where you feel like yes dude we found the perfect counter pick They're, they get totally hosed by fields of love and then you just fall behind early. You can't be that god that you're trying to exert pressure. Your your fields of loving the enemy ADC over and over and over again, and then forcing him to use his beads. And right. okay, now he has no beads. Now we kill him off Thor Dunk. It just it just feels like it's so much more uh, an on paper pick than a, than a real execution pick. Yeah, absolutely. And and. Again, the, the opposite of what they would, what uh, the Poppies would have hoped for in this early game. I do kind of want to shine a spotlight now on that solo lane. Of course, Tier maybe not surprising because of the pilot for uh, for Belt Slap. But, but Cerberus, another god, I think, that we have seen in that solo lane a little bit, maybe more typically in the Guardian role. But it, it's already Julio who's, I mean, it's not a, a massive lead, but... Cerberus has had a tough time staying healthy and really out in the middle of that lane early into this game. I, I do like the Cerberus matchup here at least a little bit, though it is very easy to interrupt that that flame breath as Arco looking for Warchi gets his beads and still nearly Whoa. kills him throughout all that damage. In fact, I think Johnny might have him here with a blink over the wall. And he blinks through and connects on all he needs to. Johnny slam dunks the setup from Arco. And the rotations in this early game to this long lane have paid off in dividends for Belt Slap. Uh, the discrepancy wide in the jungle now. Two kills, especially on the Kamazots. That is brutal. But Marcus has done a pretty good job farming, and, and Thor can That's turn true. fights pretty quickly, but you're certainly looking for him to make an impact sooner rather than later because it's getting to the point where Uller's going to snowball this lane out of control really, really quickly. Warchi dying even after using beads is kind of worst case scenario. If he dies to the combo and his beads are coming up, okay, you know, I'll, I'll live through the next one. Now it's, I barely lived through that one. Arkill's still getting a lot stronger. He's not even close to the point where he's at his strongest. And I have no purification beads. Yep. That's a scary spot. You talked about needing to make an impact early for Marcus. Hit level 5 just a couple moments ago and now level 6. So Anvil of Dawn available. If you're Marcus, though, you're in this scenario. Are you bothering looking towards that long lane with Arkel so far ahead of, of Warchi? I think you are because Arkel is still an Uller that's, that's fairly easy to gank the majority of the time. I mean, if he's in both stands, you know you've got time to get damage off before he's going to be able to jump away. All Warchi really needs is is a, a, a little bit of damage and set up for Marcus to where that Heart Bomb is going to do 20% or so of Arkill's HP by itself. So Marcus doesn't need to do that much more damage overall. It, that's easy enough for Thor to do 60% right. you know, of someone's life bar, even through Purification Beads. It's just that this is good warding by Belt Slap. It, it, they're not getting an opportunity. 
Oh, Warchi caught out and he dashes back towards the belt slap tower. Trix Tank will plug away a final few shots. Warchi will sustain himself, but that only goes so far. And a couple feet further is about that distance as Harkle has gotten the second kill of the game. I think interesting note though, Aggro, is Trix Tank has hung around in this long lane a little bit longer, whereas Draco Marino has kind of left and now it's resulted in a couple of kills. It's just, if it's not going to be Johnny coming over to kill Warchi, it's, it's going to be Trix Tank. And that's kind of what right. teams have done, where, where, or what Belt Slap, excuse me, has done to other teams so far this year is we're just going to set up our kill to carry us, and, and he's probably going to do it. Oh, poor Draco Marino, caught between a rock and a hard place. We'll be able to use the ult and dash himself out. Spear to the nine wins from Chekio soars on through. And maybe he gets a little bit of damage, but instead it's a killing spree now for Johnny. As the final sweep of the bat out of hell locks down Draco Marino. Three kills on the belt slap jungler. 3-0 and 2. He's been a part of every single kill so far. Somehow even got an assist on that kill on the Warchi that, that Trick Stank and Arkill were yeah, able wait, to nag. <laughs> uh, he, he was close. He was like by Gold Fury. I'm still surprised he got that assist because he didn't really contribute at all. Except to zone That's out Ganesh Marcus. But, yeah, seriously. It feels like an S range at that point. But look. It's it, it's just so difficult for the poppies when they're going to pick something like Cupid and hope that we can get to the team fighting phase again. It, it, you just need to put more focus on the laning phase. I think that they're they're not giving themselves a good enough opportunity to win these games because they're they're expecting to get to the 5 on 5s. Right. And they just aren't right now. They just aren't even close. Yeah, the the expectations at this point are just trying to survive some more of this early game, an engagement on a Trix tank could help, but instead it's Marcus who's now taking a little bit of extra damage. Chekio in range, Spear of the Nine wins, not ready to go just yet, so the mid laner for the Poppies will have to wait a little bit longer before a potentially fight-changing ultimate can fly on through, but it looks like just a little bit of health plugged away, and despite the, the discrepancy there, the Poppies found an engagement and actually found some decent damage. You, you can't write them out of this one just yet. And they got Johnny's blink, so that's uh, Warchi's thankful to hear that, I'm sure, on that left-hand side more so than anybody else on the map right now. But, I mean, if you're, if you're belt slap, all you have to really worry about is where Marcus is. As long as you are keeping track of this Thor, exactly where the, those dunks are going to be coming from, I think that you've got a great shot. Oh, this is a sneaky gold fury pulled out. A couple members of Belt Slap were back in base. Epic uppercut connects onto Warchi, who will dash on through. Spear to the nine wins, mitigated heavily by Johnny popping the bat out of hell, and he's found some good damage, but no kills just yet. And that may be enough to dissuade the poppies. Marcus had used the Anvil of Dawn, but that was used for disengage from himself as well. Julio has suddenly joined the party, but both solo laners have arrived at the same time. And instead, it's Belt Slap maybe turning back towards this Gold Fury. And Trix Tank's gonna keep everybody busy. Creed has his Whoa. ultimate, and he's coming in, but it's already gone between that Merlin and the Uller damage. That gold fury does not stand for long. That's fast. That pulls a big lead now for Belt Slap. About three and a half thousand gold down in the red. And two, two, three thousand XP as well now if you're the poppies. It, it was a, a good start to maybe a, a jungle skirmish there around that gold fury. But enough attention was pulled away and enough resources used by the poppies that Belt Slap, they can burn those objectives plenty quickly enough. Especially when Creed or Chekio uses that ultimate the way that he did right. in, in a pretty low percentage opportunity uh, on that fight on bottom left side. Or it, it's just that the Poppies have not been able to make the most out of their, their ultimates that you expect to be very impactful in these team fights. Spear of the Nine Winds, Anvil of Dawn, Stygian Torment, Fields of Love. These are all really, really impactful ultimates in five on fives. Or in, in Thor's case in particular, in the gank opportunities, but it just hasn't worked yet. Arkel has used his beads here, and actually Warchi turned around a good bit of damage. Arkel missing a couple more of the abilities than maybe he had hoped for on the engagement. And I think Warchi sensing that Belt Slap aren't afraid of a tower dive. He'll, he'll take the easy path back to base and rejoin later. And in Agra, I think in game one, the, the kernel of hope that we're holding on to for the Poppies is that they had a heavily late game composition. What's the kernel of hope that, that you're holding on to here in game two? Uh, that you hit back-to-back five-man alts. You, you, <laughs> you five-man fields of love, okay? 
into a five-man Sigean Torment. No one has beads, and also everyone has closed their eyes on the enemy team. And then you five-man Sphere of the Nine wins. That's what, I, that's what you're looking for now if you're the poppies. I mean, it so isn't dream. that dire yet. Yeah, you're, we're, we're looking for magical Christmas land, more or less. You're buying a one-way ticket if you're the poppies the, the, to the happiest place on Earth. The, it, it's going to be difficult at this point, but it, it, it's not that or bust. Right. Quite yet. I mean, Marcus still has an opportunity to make a make an impact in some of these lanes. He's not out of the woods. It, it, you're, these laners aren't out of the woods on on where Marcus is going to be and if he can change a team fight. It's just got to happen sooner rather than later. They clearly don't have a whole lot of time because the last yep. game ended in 23 minutes, I believe. So you, we're about on pace for that. Absolutely, and and I love a small moment there while, while we're chatting. Some good deep wards from Belt Slap keep Arkle safe enough to, to realize that Marcus is maybe rotating around for a bit of a gank, and instead it's Belt Slap who will bring the aggression. Warchi dashes in, finds the delete onto Arkle, had the Kepri ult, but smartly played by Johnny to let that one time out. Chekio in range and will find some good damage onto Johnny as well. Suddenly the Poppies have found themselves a two for one trade. I love that play from Warchi going aggressive, knowing that Ark built up the purification beads. But all of that fight goes well, exclusively because the two players that died on Belt Slap hadn't backed for their second relic. They're both level 12. Ark didn't have Aegis. Johnny didn't have beads. If either of those two have those relics, Warchi doesn't kill anybody. True. And, and you're sitting in a bad spot still if you're the poppies. So that's a good opportunity. You take it for, for the one-off, but don't expect that to be continuing once these relics are up online. Yeah, I'm not sure it's magical Christmas land just yet for the poppies, but maybe a glimmer of an opening to get back into this game. Chekio, I, I think that's where I look. I mean, not overall, but I think now that he has one of the kills online, I, I kind of just taking a glance down towards the level discrepancy. Zeros ha has far and away taken control of this lane to maybe one and a half levels ahead. It's it's really, really difficult as well to try and match that output that, that either of these backliners for, for Belt Slap are going to do at this point in the game. I mean, Merlin just getting that Soul Reaver online this early. I love this itemization from Zeros. It's expensive, but if you can build it in this slot, it still feels very, very impactful. Arkill is at a really strong point in his build, nearly finished with his Transcendence, working towards that Executioner. Warchi just isn't nearly as strong. He's not even close on that Transcendence finish yet. Chekio forced to burn the Aegis there to stay alive. Does not have Spirit of the Nine wins either, so that was just used a moment ago. Marcus has found Johnny, potentially unfortunately, back in the jungle. Snags the Kepri ult. Ooh, oh, close. just nearly timed properly by Johnny. Doesn't matter as Julio has found the kill. Zeros snags the second in this engagement for Belt Slap. A decent ultimate, though, is going to pull a couple members back in, and Warchi is able to pull back a kill. Trix Tank down into the passive, and Warchi is going to snag a double kill. Suddenly another fight. Despite it being a two for two, the Poppies are finding some advantages. They're getting something, and Johnny takes another spill. He's now going to have his Purification Beads. He's only level 11 previous. Or no, he actually just used them right there. I forgot Creed found the ultimate, and it forced that out nicely. Creed is able to make his first impact Frankly, of the set, I mean, the RDO did, did a whole lot of nothing. Game one right there, his rotation in, makes sure that the Poppies get at least two. And now the dream scenario for the Poppies is that they can punish the players who just use beads, Johnny and Julio, and try and get them locked down in this Fields of Love. And they're going to have an opportunity to do so with an Oni Fury fight. Maybe brewing here as Belt Slapper fully respawned and back from base, but... I think smartly there from the poppies to pull off. Maybe saw a small opening, realized it had closed. And now we're back to somewhat even, a, a three and a half thousand gold lead for Belt Slap. So largely where it was aggro five minutes ago, it, it sort of stagnated here for Belt Slap as the poppies have found some good fights. That was just a, a, an old kick of the tires by the poppies on the Gold Fury to, to check and see what Slap in the Belt room. Slap was going to do. Yeah, have you heard? Have you heard the term... Checking the. Were you here for this? Checking the was this, yes, uh, this that's was a, a that's Twitter a, argument, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. That is a very yes, common I've heard phrase. Kicking the tires. Yes. It's a very common phrase that everyone knows 
Except for everyone who trolled me on my Twitter poll a while ago, and I'm still salty about it. Beltzot may be trading Pyromancer for Fury here. Blink through from Trix Tank has found the double Mez. Poppies do finish off the Oni Fury. Marcus takes to the skies. Anvil of Dawn looking for a target, and it's Johnny. Hey, you've got no beads, but you do have a bat out of hell, and he'll swoop through with a sliver of HP. So well targeted by Marcus, but unable to find the execute. Julio is in. Gets stunned down. Fields of Loves will drop down onto that tier. This is a messy fight over by the mid lane harpies and a good pull back from Creed. We'll send a couple low health members of Belt Slap right back into the fray. Draco Marinos found a good target for his ultimate and saved the life of one. And Julio overstays and just a little bit too low. Zeros burns the Aegis. Now he's going to go down. Suddenly it's six kills on the board for the poppies. Arkel burns the actives. He might be able to get out alive here, but Warji has some relics of his own as well. A couple more plug shots will do it. Johnny right back in the back line. Aggro, it's three versus three here on the side, and that might just be the disengage until Chekio finds a final kill. What in the world was that? I mean, that was <laughs> that a whole lot of abilities being fired off in the middle of nowhere. I mean, everyone just slamming their buttons left and right. And I don't even know who comes out on top, Dave. I got lost halfway through all that. I mean, the Poppies get the Gold Fury, and take a look at the Gold lead. They are back in a pretty healthy position, unlike Whoa. Johnny, who decided that he wasn't done throwing buttons all over the place without a whole lot of thought, and gets insta-killed by Warchi. I mean, this is how you get back into it. You, you just brawl in, in the jungle. Chekio's low on mana, but might have enough for ult soon. Looks like we're magical Christmas lens. The poppies are uh, they're here yeah. in Jingle Bell as they have pulled this lead right back to even. Not only kills but gold as well. A, a 200 differential kicked the tires on the uh, on the fire giant there, and not much nice. came of it. But here we are, right back at even aggro. 18 minutes in. You know, magical Christmas land's a lot uglier than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I thought it'd be a lot nicer here, but uh, but you're right. We've arrived. For the poppies, that everyone from Belt Slap is is just kind of running in one by one, going in, not really target focusing particularly well. Oof. I mean, look at the spike. The poppies are in the lead at this point because Belt Slap take a take a bad fire or did bad fight around that Gold Fury. It's not that bad if they just give that one up. It's really bad if they go in over and over and over again and lose a whole lot of members. And Chekio has. Despite still being one level down, pulled that mid lane discrepancy much closer to even as well. And I think Marcus has found some good engagements. Creed, though, I, I think a big turnaround in a lot of these fights. I think the Cerberus ults have, have been hitting the mark pretty well. And, and I think yep. that's important for him after game one to have a, a larger impact here in game two. Completely agree. And, he, and he's set up to be a really big impact player now. He's level 18, has been farming very well, has a high to the urchin. So he's going to get very tanky very quickly as long as team fights continue to go the way they've been going, which is really just a bloodbath on both sides, you're going to stack up that Hide of the Urchin pretty quickly, and Julio's recognized the same thing and picked up that Hide of the Urchin. Both are, are lacking in HP, but being warriors and guardians, they get pretty good HP per level, so that's not mm -hmm. too much of a concern, but I, I would be looking for some sort of HP item if I were on either side, protections do a lot for you, but you want some health to, to go behind it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't know what good protecting like 100 HP is going to do for you, but uh, when you build on that a little bit extra, the, the prots are going to go a little bit further for you. And I love the way that Warchi has, has pulled his advantage. He found, what, one, two kills in that long lane and was largely behind in that early game. Yep. And the way it's turned around. I mean, even these small moments, and maybe it's more misplay from Belt Slap than on point play from the Poppies. Arkle and Trix Tank staying around when they were level 12, couldn't get the, the second tier relics on. Warchi has absolutely turned this game around for the Poppies. To be 4-4-4 four, four, and four and ahead of Arkle at this point is nearly a miracle for Warchi after how rough that laning phase was. 0-3 oh, at one point. I mean, to, to bounce back like this is phenomenal. And, and now, if you're the Poppies, you feel like you've got a really good shot because your you're five on five is going to be very strong. You've got a lot of great ultimates to use in the five on five. Now it's a matter of communication. One right. ultimate has to get beads. The other has to punish it. You can't overlap. You, you, 
you really have to use that Stygian Torment and Fields of Love in one after the other. Well, he uses Fields of Love here, but Marcus will dunk down and Bill of Dawn will not be able to connect onto the bat out of hell from Johnny. Brilliant Aegis usage from Warchi, but only just for a second because Johnny saved that leap for the last moment, was able to snag the kill on a Cupid. So now you've got a numbers advantage here. If your belt slap another Hello. fight, oh, massive from Julio will knock back three into the awaiting arms of belt slap, but no kills come of it just yet. Draco Marino is low and might have to use the ultimate on himself and instead headed to the grave with the ultimate still off of cooldown. What a play, Julio on the rotation. Easy as you like for belt slap. Man, that is, when you're talking about some fearless power cleave action, that's what you're looking for, a triple fearless. It's really a crime that they only get one kill off of something that big from Julio, but they still get the Gold Fury afterwards. Now they're going to rotate over, tr probably do the Pyromancer. I can't imagine Fire Giant is necessarily the call, but I mean, I don't know. Maybe Warchi's still down right now. They could try yeah. it. He is back and respawning, him being Warchi, and... His Fire Giant started up here, Aggro. Belt Slap have it. Down to about half health. Creed is in range. The burn damage plenty from Zeros. Creed in range. Belt Slap secure the FG, though. A big lead pulled back now by Belt Slap. Chekio still under duress in the mid lane. Has both actives if need be. Creed does not have any that'll save his life, so Belt Slap snag the Fire Giant and get a kill, and suddenly things looking dire one more time from the Poppies. Nice wall from Marcus is going to block off Trick's tank so he can't CC Draco. And that's what you're hoping for for the Poppies, right? I mean, that, that it's going to be a five-man grouping, but not necessarily when you're on the run because Warchi got picked off on that left-hand side. Johnny's really exerted great pressure this game on this Kamazots onto that duo lane side. They kill Warchi. Everyone's on the run. And when you're getting three-man fearlessness, you're not losing a whole lot of games. That's... Kind of the way no. it goes. If you, if you, maybe towards the back end of a team fight where it doesn't matter too much, all your damage is dead, that won't do a whole lot for you. But, man, get it in the midst of a five on four to pick up three out of four living members for the Poppies. I mean, Julio's had himself a day. And, and, and that's what's really exciting about this Belt Slap team is that you've got these three SPL superstars that are, that are all really well established in the scene in Zeros, in Trix Tank, and in Arkill. And this is Julio and Johnny's attempt to, to hit the next level. They're, they're coming right. out party, so to speak. It, it, whether or not they can be that next tier of SPL stars. Johnny, I think everyone is really excited about and, and new deserved a spot on this team. I think everyone sees Julio and goes, yeah, he's pretty good. He'll be fine over here. But he's really been a huge part of this team so far this year. I think that Julio is, has surpassed expectations I and agree. expectations weren't low for this guy i agree and small moments in this game have really shown why there were such big expectations for julio and just a moment ago despite no kill on to warch he was able to burn the beads of that cupid so a minute 35 seconds or so until the beads are ready again for the poppy's hunter and now it's the right side tier two tower under duress if you're looking at it from belt slaps perspective and Likely going to get taken down here. Arkle's going to plug plenty of damage through, and that's always the cascade, but hold on. Creed has found a kill onto Johnny in the back line. Marcus there to assist as well. It's a five versus four, unless Marcus is able to get out alive, and the scales are tilted right back to even. Nice double pull from Zeros is going to lock down a couple members of the Poppies here, and Creed is going to have to leap out. Draco Marino down from the epic uppercut. Arkle's there waiting for the second kill of this fight for Belt Slap and Cecchio burns the Aegis to stay alive, but will swoop himself away, and a double kill from Arkle might just put the icing on this. Cake Zeros is there as well, and Deicide maybe around the corner. Creed locked down, see you later. Arkle gets a triple, and it's a Deicide for Belt Slap. Man, that's the, that's the dream start for the Poppies. Okay, we killed Johnny right off the bat. He's been a problem for us all game. Let's take the team fight, or maybe we shouldn't, because Arkill is just free casting. That should be game, as Arkill maybe a little bit more excited. It went straight for Titan when the, all three Phoenixes were still up. But yeah, you don't give Kenny Uller, man. I mean, it, I don't know how many times you got to learn this lesson, old man, but you don't give this man Uller. He just carries games outright. It's easy for him. He's, he's looking like McKenzie over my shoulder, dude. 
snoozing he's chilling. throughout this yeah. game because he's got no cares in the world. And I think this one ends maybe how we expected it to with belt slap kind of blowing the poppies out of the water. I, I think, again, it was similar tones to, to game one, right, where – the, poppy, the, the poppies actually, I, I would say, had a better resurgence here in this game. They fell behind early to belt slap and pulled Absolutely. things even, but then weren't able to, to really do much with that kind of flattening of the curve there and belt slap down the stretch, take it all. I, I think good to hang on to. There, there are some moments here where if you're the poppies, you, you're feeling good. Obviously, belt slap, the best team in this region, maybe inarguable, but some stuff to work on to really clean up those edges. Yeah, I think the drafting was a problem for the Poppies. I mean, they, they, they bounced back fairly well in the middle of this game, but it required a bounce back of pretty solid proportions. You don't want to put yourself in relying on that on that bounce back, right? I mean, you want to be a better contender from minute one than what we saw from the Poppies here today. But my real takeaway is that Belt Slap's just way better yes. than everybody else in this region. I mean, Cold Llamas is the team that everyone's going to be looking at to try and take down Belt Slap, but... Unless Cold Llamas are able to do it, I, I don't know if anyone's really going to be able to. Yeah, I'm not sure. This is early maybe to be asking you this, but we kind of had a conversation about it this morning. Do you think this is a belt slap team? They, they qualify through the SEC to, to come to some of these events, play against some of these SPL teams. Do you think this is a team that can make some waves? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, th this is a team that has a lot of players that have done it before. I think that this is certainly a team that you do have to be concerned about if you're an SPL squad getting ready to go up against some Challenger Circuit teams. But that's for a little bit later in the year. You know, yes. we'll, we'll see later how on. they continue to develop. Later on, yes. They, they've got a, a rest of Phase 1 to work themselves through and, and into the midseason before any of the SPL teams have to worry about belt slap coming to rain on their parade. That is... This week, though, in Europe, you can see Cold Llamas did snag a win. It was 2-1, though, over Freshly Forged. Snake Pit snag a 2-0. And standings, I think, will reflect maybe what we have been talking about here, Agua, where Belt Slap on top, Cold Llamas right behind them. Of course, the one loss to Belt Slap. And none of this really jumps out and, and surprises me. I, I think this is about how I expect this to shake out. I think a lot of people would probably be surprised to see Freshly Forged at 1-4. But sure. for everyone who's been watching, that – Really should not be a whole lot of a surprise. This is kind of the way that we expected this region to go, as you highlighted. It's, it's a two-man race between the top, and it's really just belt slap and cold llamas. Hey, Agro, how do you feel about uh, SPL? You into it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm down to do it. You want to do it later on today? Yeah. Uh, what are you doing in about 50 minutes? Um, I think my schedule's pretty free. You thinking like 3 o'clock for SPL? Yeah, I think uh, 3 o'clock Eastern time, 50 minutes from now, maybe a good time to start up Season 7 of the SPL. We've got E United versus Rival to kick things off. Ladies and gentlemen, you do not want to miss it. We're going to send it to a break. We're, we're going to get everything all set up. And when we come back, 3 o'clock, the SPL starts.